Hi, this is Ashley with the International Sports Pharmacist Network. I'm back again with Dr. Jamie Wilkie, and today we're going to discuss a really commonly asked question. Now that I'm certified, what should I do? <laughs> so welcome back, Jamie. I appreciate you taking the time to be here again with me today. Yes, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Ashley. I look forward to this. <laughs> yeah, so I can imagine now that you have, you know, the special niche, a subspecialty in pharmacy that you do, and you've started your own practice, uh, you probably have a lot of people asking you, you know, now that they're certified, what do they do? And would you mind telling us what you tell people is the first step? Oh, yes, absolutely. Because that's where a lot of pharmacists get stuck, because we're really good at getting the education that we need to start. But then starting a business and starting to reach out and see people is a whole different ballgame than gaining the knowledge. And so my advice is just to start, like just figure out your niche and who it is that you're targeting and start. Just start with even a couple beta patients that are kind of quote unquote practice to get some experience with them. And then once you get your experience from them and their reviews and their feedback, then after a couple, go start. Start your business, start seeing people. That's the hardest part and people get stuck but you just have to start and have to be okay being imperfect. Just yeah. start. <laughs> yeah, and we had talked before about during, when I was in school, you know, before the PharmD years and everything being so clinically oriented, I had a lot of business classes. So the first thing I did after getting my IOC certification for drugs and sport was actually um, start a business. I registered a business for myself. And so I think sometimes if that is the person's first step, that that's okay as well. You know, it can be these small steps and then you see what you're comfortable doing, but it's a matter of taking a next step as well. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then, yeah, I, you know, one thing I've maintained uh, my clinical position at a hospital because I love clinical practice and want to keep current. And, um, and I've been using that as my source for benefits and, you know, my healthcare uh, insurance. But what do you do for that? So when I stepped away from my career, I gave up the benefits, but it's okay because as a consultant, you're able to factor that into your reimbursement. So as a consultant, you do charge significantly more. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to see the numbers go up and to feel like, wow, I have so much money. But the reality is it does cost money to run your own business. So now to work, it actually costs you money. And as well as, you know, the benefits, now you're responsible for those. And so while it is a nice pay raise, it, it also has to factor into all those things that go behind the scenes that you don't, that you kind of take for granted as a W-2 employee. So, I mean, there is that point where it's a scary jump, but mm -hmm. you can totally do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a great point, too. When you're setting up your consulting business and trying to determine whether or not you want an hourly pay or paid per job, you should remember what you're getting now from your employer is a base pay. So you just your hourly pay is just a base pay. So add on those benefits before you calculate how much you'll charge. So and then, of course, there's a lot of benefits too. you know, other benefits that you can't get when you're employed by someone else. So what is your favorite thing about being self-employed? I create my own schedule. Mm -hmm. I create my own schedule. I work with the people I want to work with and I'm growing an amazing company. So for the time I put in, I get a lot more out of it because I'm growing a company rather than just clocking in and out to a job. So it's a lot more work but it's also a lot more rewarding because I'm growing something amazing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I feel the same way. You know, my what I have done as a sports pharmacist has, the base of it has stayed the same over time. The foundation is the same in that knowledge base, but it's really, because I'm not stuck to a job duty description, I can actually evolve my practice. And it's been really nice to be able to grow and develop into other areas that I would have never guessed you know, several years ago. So, yeah. So what do you have as parting words for anybody who's looking to start their own pharmacy independent consulting practice? Oh, just start. Just start. Really, it's so easy to start a business. Like to get your LLC and to get a business form, you can do in like 24 hours online. It's so mm -hmm. easy. So just start. Don't worry about everything being perfect. 
to start. Action yep. is the cure to fear. There's some quote like that. And it's true. Like you can spin your wheels forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Start. Yep. Great advice. Yeah. Well, I'd like to meet with you again. I feel like we both have great passions for about for what we do. And so maybe next time we can meet and talk about the passion side of things or uh, building confidence as a pharmacist doing your own thing. Okay, let's do it. Thank you so much for your time today. And those of you who are watching, please like and subscribe and share this video with anyone who might like it. Thank you. Thanks.